Hello everyone, my name is Michael. In this episode of this Puppeteer tutorial series, I'm going to show you how we can use Octo Browser, which is an anti-detect browser, with Puppeteer to bypass detection systems and manage multiple accounts. Okay, so what is an anti-detect browser? Well, when you visit websites, they collect a digital fingerprint which is basically details about your browser and device, like your OS, your browser version, and websites use this fingerprint to identify you from multiple users and also customize your experience. So when you use standard Puppeteer, websites can often tell you are using automation. This is because Puppeteer uses the same browser fingerprint each time. And also it leaves signs of automation, like certain properties, of the fingerprint reveal that it's controlled by a bot when you're using normal puppeteer and websites look for these clues and detect and block your script now this is where octo browser fixes this by providing realistic and unique fingerprints for each browser profile and by hiding automation indicators that puppeteer normally exposes so when you use Octo Browser with Puppeteer, your automated actions look like they are coming from a real user and not a bot, and this makes it much harder for websites to detect and block you. Now, for example, imagine you have a social media or e-commerce account that you need to automate for certain tasks, like collecting messages, posting content, or scraping data from your account dashboard. Now, if you are to do this with a regular Puppeteer browser and run automated scripts, the website could detect the bot-like behavior and flag or even ban your account. But when you use Octo Browser and maybe you log in into your account manually the first time, now the next time you use Puppeteer to automate tasks like scraping data or performing certain actions, you will still look like a regular user. Because the first time you log in manually, Octo Browser will generate a unique fingerprint that makes you look like a normal human user. So, yeah, that's what Octo Browser does. It basically mimics natural human behavior and it prevents the website from detecting that you are using automated scripts. Okay, so first of all, go ahead and click the link down in the description to sign up to Octo Browser. And when you go and select your package and create an account, make sure you use my code in the screen and you will get 7 days of base subscription for free. In our use case, we will be using the API access, so you probably need at least to get the base version if you want to use it with Puppeteer. And as you'll see, based on your usage, you might want to go with Team, Advanced or Custom. Also, Octo Browser offers a referral program so make sure you check it out as you will see you can get users and earn 50 percent commission for a year of the user payments so yeah after you sign up go to slash download on octobrowser.net and then here choose your operating system if you have windows mac or mac os m series or linux in my case i'm using mac os so i'll click here download and then once you install it go ahead and log in and you'll get to this page right here when you first log in so yeah the first thing we need to do after you log into your account and you have purchased a package is to go ahead and create a profile so we'll go here on the profiles tab and click create a profile okay so first of all let's go through the options here when setting up a profile so you see first of all we can put a profile name so for example let's do test Hashtag one, we can put a description here. As you'll see here, we can put a proxy and I'll show you in a bit how we can add proxies. But I have already added proxies, so we can click one of them. Then you can assign tags. So you can then filter them out by the tags. Here you can put the start pages. So whenever you open the browser, where it should start. And also add bookmarks. And here's the most important settings. Here you can specify what settings are persistent even when you when the profile is stopped. So for example, we want to maintain cookies, passwords, 
extensions, bookmarks, but maybe we don't want to have persistent history. Then here we can set up a fingerprint. So we can either do a random fingerprint or we can go here on the fingerprint tab and then set it up as we want. So for example, we can set a custom user agent. We can then specify our operating system, the OS version, screen resolution, fonts, languages, time zone, geolocation, all of that settings. Now, usually you can just use a random fingerprint it, and it will use a normal fingerprint. So it will simulate a normal browser. But if you want to configure any of those settings, you can do so here. You can also specify hardware settings, also WebRTC, and you can also specify a DNS address. Then we can go on cookies. Now here, if you want, for example, to use cookies from a website you are already logged in in. For example, you can copy cookies around the website and you can use them here. So when you open the browser and you visit that website, you are already logged in. Next, you can go here on security and set a password. So whenever you launch the browser, you launch the profile, which I'll show you in a bit how we do so. You can enter a password. So only by knowing the password, you can operate that profile. And then we have extensions. So basically the Google extensions that you will be using. You can either give it the Chrome Web Store URL or you can upload your own custom extension if you are coding one yourself. Yeah, let's create the profile actually. So let's click here, create profile so you can see it. There you go. As you see, the profile is created. Now let's go on proxies and let me show you again how proxies work. So as you see, we have a few options here. We can add a proxy manually, as you'll see right here. Or we can do bulk add, which is which I suggest you using. If you even if you use one proxy, it's very easy to do so with bulk because you can just go on the proxy site. You can go on your proxy provider. For example, I'm using Node Maven, and you can just copy your proxies, go back, and copy paste them here. And it's that easy to add them. Now there is two types of proxies. If you don't know already, we have sticky proxies and rotating proxies. So for example, if you are using Octo browser and you want to maintain access on one account, for example, you are using Facebook and you are logged in on an account. It's best to use a sticky proxy because it maintains a static IP address. But if you do web scrapping and you are not using a certain account, then it's best to use rotating. So each time you do web scrapping, each time you launch a profile, it will do so with another IP address. So yeah, in that case, you can just grab a rotating proxy, go on Octo browser, add the proxy, and then assign that proxy on your profile. So for example, if you want to edit your profile, you can click here, click edit profile. You can go here on your proxy and select your proxy and click save changes. And now basically we are using the rotating proxy. So as you will see, we can also show you how that works. So if I click the proxy, and then I click check proxy. As you'll see, the first time it will check the proxy, as you see, is this IP address. But if I click check proxy again, it will be another IP address. So each time they change the IP address. Now you can also create templates. So if you click here on templates, you can click create a template. So if you want to use certain settings for your profiles and you want to create like 50 profiles, you don't want to go and set up a fingerprint each time, set up security extensions and that kind of stuff. You can create it once, create a template basically. You can set up your fingerprint like let's say we want our operating system to be Windows. You can create you can click create template. And then you can go back on your profile and either you can click here and click bulk create to create multiple profiles with the same template. For example, I can select the, the template I created. 
specify an amount of profiles I want to create, let's say 10, and then I can click Add Profiles. And it will create 10 profiles with, this, with the same template I chose. But for now, let's cancel that. Now, have in mind the template feature is an exclusive Octo feature. So, yeah, let's go ahead and launch our profile. Now, the first time we'll do it manually, but I'll show you in a bit how we'll do that all of that automatically and then use it with Puppeteer. But for now, let's use it normally. So, I'll launch it. And there we go. This is our browser. Now, you can do whatever you want here. For example, you can go, let's say we are scrapping stuff from Facebook. We can go on Facebook. You can log in. So the next time you launch the browser, if you have selected to maintain cookies, the next time you will open your browser, you, are, you will be already logged in. And then basically you can then connect it with your Puppeteer script and perform actions automatically. Now let's see a few other features we can do with profiles. I show you how to edit the profile. Now you can also clone your profile. So if you have set up a profile and you want another similar profile, you can just click clone. You can select the amount and basically clone the profile you have created. You can also transfer profile. So for example, if you have someone else, if you have another Octo browser account and you want to transfer the profile to that account, you can do so by clicking here to transfer. And then type here the email of your other Octo browser account. Now, by the way, make sure you set up your two-factor authentication for security purposes. And also, if you have a team account, you might want to invite your team members here. So you can do so by clicking here on your profile and clicking team. Then you can invite someone, put their email here and also, and also distribute access rights. So here you can see, for example, you can allow them to delete extensions or view tasks and stuff like that so you can set up everything here regarding access so that's a great feature as well and also a great feature that octo browser has which is exclusive to them if you go on profiles if, if you have some tasks in mind that someone must do on your team you can go on your profile click here create a task and then you can create tasks that they should do for example scrape X stuff. You can select the time after one hour, for example, or after three days, and create the task. Also, put a description here, for example. This is a great feature for task management. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can use the API from Octo Browser and use it with combination with our Puppeteer script. So, first of all, click the link down in the description and download my GitHub repo. And I have created a very simple example here. This is the API we'll be using. This is the API URL for your Octo browser when running it locally. And what we are doing is we are sending a request and we are saying profiles slash start. By the way, I'll have a link down in the description. You can check out their API here. And as you'll see, they have Puppeteer examples. So they have functions for creating a profile, starting a profile, and etc. But I have created a simpler version for you to follow. But basically, we'll be doing the same thing as you see with the example here. We have we are using Puppeteer, and then we will be starting the profile since we have already created the profile. But you can also create the profile using the API they have. And yeah, as you'll see on the code, we have here the variable profile UUID. Now to find the profile UUID, it's very simple. Go on your Octo browser. And as you'll see, here's the ID. But if you are not seeing the ID here, you can click here on the plus sign and select it here because by default, it doesn't show up. So make sure you select the ID there. And then you can just copy the ID. Go on your code and paste it here. So let's go ahead and test our script. So we have provided the profile UUID. And then when we make this request, it should respond with the endpoint for our browser WS endpoint. 
and then basically we are using we are telling puppeteer to connect to our browser so once our browser is created we tell puppeteer to connect to that browser and i'm using a very simple script i'm basically telling it to con to go to google and that's it and yeah so let's test it out so let's type node index and there we go as you see that's it now of course you can do whatever you want here but our script was very simple and of course you can follow the other tutorials as well it's very simple as you see they have puppeteer playwright selenium and all of those libraries the popular web scrapping libraries so again i'll have the link to this postman api down in the description